Welcome to today's Seokan Saturday. Today's last Yakusoku technique for Goku, Green Belt Strike, is Seokan Yakusoku Nanaban, number seven. There are some intricate hand workings, and this goes to the economy of motion notion. I like that, the economy of motion notion. Um, which means I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Once I have a hold of something, and this, this is going to come into play, you'll see in a second, I don't want to have to re-grip, switch my grip, grab, switch, turn, any more than if I'm doing a, an Ippon Kumite. I want to have to throw the guy and then make 14 adjustments. So we want to move as smoothly with as little extraneous motion as possible. So, Yakusoku Nanaban. His punch is coming in. I'm going to step on an angle to the outside and we can, I don't want to hard block it. So it's going to be kind of a follow and, and block catch, if you will. And again, we're not, oh, I can't catch an arm. If he punches and pulls back, hey, and I blocked and tried to grab. Okay, you probably pull back like a fight sure. position, okay? So if he's, hey, and I go here and I've tried to grab, okay, but I still have this in. Now I can extend it and I can still move into my technique. So we're not going to get into the whole catching a punch. We work things for showing how the body can potentially move. I, I may or may not be able to use this verbatim, any of these techniques that we do, verbatim in a fight. But if I can flow from one technique to another, but I can't do that unless I know the full motion and potential. So we're not going to get into all that. All right. So he's punching. Hey, I come in moving here. If I do this, uh, I've lost him. But if I follow the punch, even if he bends his arm like he's taking a swing through, if I'm following the punch, I can get a hold. I'm going to grab the wrist, push down on the wrist, up on the elbow, creating a wing. I'm going to drive the fist the wrist, not changing my grip, driving my fist through the gap in my elbow. Now, what can sometimes happen if I don't, but if I don't get this opposition motion enough, is he may end up with his arms straightening out. There are ways to deal with that. We can go into an arm bar change position, but if I want to do this technique, I need to make sure that his wing stays bent throughout. So, hey, I'm swinging, up at the elbow, down at the wrist, pushing through, trying to make sure that his arm stays bent. Now here, I'm going to come closer to camera so I can show the manipulation here. In this position, as I'm pushing through here, I haven't changed my hand grip, but now I do need to turn it. I don't want to let go and try to re-grab. So what I'm going to do is follow his hand using the roll of my wrist as I come into this grip. Okay, so this manipulation from here through, without letting his arm straighten, keep it close to my arm, keep a pull here, then I'm going to follow his hand with the back of my hand as it turns, where I can actually catch, create the lock, and at the end of the technique, show you the takedown here. So that's, that's a really important thing to not have to, have to re-grip and re-grab all the time. Now, there are some techniques we do in Tweety and so forth where maybe I have to, but if I have him here and come under here, I want to, if I'm going to do that, I want to make sure I keep tight and keep pressure on, and then we can work on other manipulations. There are, but I'm not taking my grip that was here and then letting go and grabbing here and then grabbing here and then going here, and I don't have to do 400 re-gripping things for <laughs> Okay, so the, I, I want to be as economical as I push through. Some of this comes from the chisao, sticky hands, or in Okinawa we call kakie, which is a little bit harder, but it's the same idea. Have we done kakie? Okay, so go left hand. The same idea is I want to adhere to him as much as possible as we're doing kakie so that there isn't any extraneous re-gripping, but that it flows smoothly through. That's where we learn to do this, and this is the first technique that sort of employs that concept. So, right, block, push, drive through, keeping the elbow bent, manipulate. I can use my whole arm against his forearm here as my hand comes to position. From here, I'm just going to do a change body 
to my knee, similar to what we do with the bow staff, and drop to my knee. And I have his face plant, I have a lock on the wrist here, I can drive, break his elbow and shoulder, he can't roll forward, okay, which would be a good escape if you do a forward roll. Oh no, he's escaped, now I have to transition to a different thing. And we will learn to do that, we'll practice doing transitions, but if I get him proper, properly manipulated from the get-go, I don't have to mess with that, okay? Seokan Yaksoku Nanaban, number seven. Hey! And locked. Hey. Make sure. That's it. There's a lot in there. From here, manipulate through. Follow the hand. Lock the wrist down, pressing down on the, on the triceps or shoulder as I drop my weight. Pretty much the end of the fight and his face. Dental procedures later. That's it. Serokan Yakusoku number seven. That completes our Yakusoku, both Kempo and Serokans, for the Goku level. Thank you for following um, all the new subscribers. I hope these are useful. If you need expansion explanation, more follow up, um, what if scenarios, questions, comments. So, Thank you for being on board. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, tell a joke, leave a comment, tell a friend, come to my Facebook page. Do all those fun things. And until next week, as always, keep practicing.